Willis time. Alright, so what we have here is a 1949 Willys Overland one ton four wheel drive flatbed truck. I've had this truck for a little over a year, I've been working on it a lot. Sorry about that. I'm leaning on a on a different Willys right here and the hood's a little janky on it, so forgive me for that sound. Anyway, so this is the this is the dream truck that I've wanted since I was a child. Since I was probably seven or eight. This is it. And we finally got her dialed in where we're not lacking very much, so let me show you around her a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try to hold the camera as steady as I can, but my handshake is, y'all can tell, so there we go, there's the Jeep truck logo. Come along through here. I put these mirrors on there because it didn't have the factory mirrors, so I got some of these vintage style tow mirrors. They're pretty handy looking. You open her up here. I've got this door panel off because I was working on the window regulator over here, but I've got the door panel. That's what it looks like. It's a it's not a factory door panel. Excuse me, there's a plane coming over. Yeah, there's the plane. Anyway, uh, it's not the factory door panel, but the factory door panels were kind of bland. They're just kind of vinyl covered or felt covered, but these are cut out of uh, veneered oak wood, so look pretty good. Anyway, as you can see, I got a little bit of wiring going on here, but that's for the blinkers. I've got to put a fuse in, and then I'm going to wrap all that up nice and tuck it up underneath the dash. It'll be out of the way. We've got a blinker uh, set up right here, so that gives you that gives you some blinker action right there. I got the brakes all set up. Uh, this is a three-speed four-wheel drive. So there's your four-wheel drive levers right there. That's your uh, engage, disengage, and then four high and four low. Uh, this is a T90 uh, Willys transmission. And this was a real popular transmission that Willys used forever. And it's basically the World War II style a uh, transmission that's a little beefed up a little bit stronger but as we can see here this truck's a 49 so it's got the the first rendition of gauges in it so that's the uh they changed the gauges three times i like the middle era gauges the best i think they're the best looking but i've grown to like these quite a bit too and i think we're we're showing 32,833 miles on this truck which it could have rolled over, but I find it doubtful because, you know, this truck tops out at about 35 miles an hour. So it's it's not, you know, 32,000 miles at 35 miles an hour is a hell of a long way. Uh, it was always a flatbed. It's a factory flatbed, so the back of the cab's a little beat up from where they were loading stuff onto the bed. Now, this isn't the original bed, but they did a pretty good job making it to where it looks pretty similar to about the size of what the original flatbed would have looked like. It's not perfect by any means, but it's pretty good. I have dumped endless amount of time and money into this truck. And there's been times where I wasn't convinced it was worth it, but every time I pull it out here, she's a little dusty now. And by she, I mean his name's actually Jubal. That's what this truck's named. But put some brand new non-directional military type tires um, here at the bottom here. It's got a brand new fuel tank. Got brand new fuel lines. Come along through here. Doors are in really good shape. They're they're a little wavy, but there's zero rust in them. Uh, here's the other fender. Fenders are real nice. Come around here to the front. Now these these blinker apparatus here, right there, that's not factory. And I personally wouldn't have put it on there, but since it was already on there and they did a pretty good job, I'm willing to overlook it. I got this bumper right here out of Virginia. I went all the way to Virginia to look at some more of these trucks. The guy lied through his teeth about every single thing that he possibly could have, so I drove seven and a half hours in the rain for no reason at all. 
and all I got out of it was this bumper, which now I'm pretty pleased that I got the bumper because it makes the truck look badass. You can't get enough of this truck. I can anyway. Other people don't see it, but you know, what do they know? They want five one of cabs, they're two wheel drive. So I've done a lot of work on this truck. So I've, like I said, I've done the fuel system. I've done the brake system. I upgraded it to disc brake in the front here. Now that wasn't for my safety, it was for the truck's safety because this truck would have had fairly small drum brakes on it. And I don't want, you know, someone to pull out in front of me. And yeah, it only goes 35, but if your brakes are shut, it doesn't really matter. I don't want to wreck the truck. So this truck's frame is just immaculate. It's not bent, it's not broke. There's no welded spots on it. There's no rod in it, nothing. The, the, the frame on it is just immaculate. Um, sorry, I let the camera wander there. I'm doing this freehand stuff here. Uh, the windshield's real nice. All the glass in it's intact. I do need to put a windshield seal in it eventually. It's all right right now. But back to the inside here, something I forgot to mention. So these trucks generate, you know, it's a bare metal floor, so they generate quite a lot of heat. So you might not be able to tell, but this, this stuff that kind of looks like bed liner is this stuff called lizard skin. And it's supposed to reduce the temperature of the floor and the firewall by like 25, 30 degrees. It's really expensive, but so far I'm happy with it. I'm going to get a rubber mat to go in here and cover this floor so it'll look a little bit cleaner. Um, now I'm going to mount this temperature gauge in a different spot because the factory temp gauge wasn't working, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't overheating. I'm going to mount that kind of in the tucked away hidden spot. So my plan for this truck is I'm going to put the sideboards on it back here on the on the back end, but the sideboards, you know, stake body, and then I'm going to make a a bow system that I can put like a canvas tarp on it, basically make it, you know, a covered back end, and I'm going to use it for camping. I think there'd be nothing cooler in the world than to go up there in the mountains where I camp and cook and everything and drive this old four-wheel drive Willie's truck up there. Camp in the back. There's enough room to put up a cot, have a stove back here, have it covered. That way if it rains, it's no big deal. I think that would just be sick as hell. So here's the tow bar assembly. That's the factory tow system. So I could pull a boat, maybe... Maybe a boat like that 1950 feather craft over there, but we'll show you that some other time. Um, the frame on this truck is just amazing. So here's the tail lights. There's a tail light and a blinker right there. Um, I really just can't go over this truck enough. It's just so beautiful. I just love this truck. I drove all the way to Arkansas, about nine hours to Arkansas to get this truck. And it's been a nightmare. So when I first got this truck, uh, I had it home for probably, I don't know, maybe a month. And the rear end of the truck, the rear axle, uh, started locking up on me. So the rear axle was what they call a Temkin clamshell rear end. And it depends on who you ask. Some people say it's the best rear end Willie's ever used. Other ones say it's the worst. In my experience, it's the worst. So the rear end goes out. So that set back the whole truck build here quite a bit because I had to track down a rear end. I'm not going to butcher it like everybody wants to do. They want to put a Ford 9-inch rear end. They want to do this. They want to swap a 350 or a 454. I'm not going to do that. I want it factory. I don't give a damn if it only goes 35. It looks good while it goes 35. Like Jay Leno says, you know it's a good truck if you can enjoy it going really slow. So I went over to South Carolina, I tracked down a rear end, I traded some stuff, went and got it, brought it back. It was no good, I had to have it rebuilt. When I went to have it rebuilt, I had them check my front axle here, too. And when they checked the front axle, it needed rebuilt. So I ended up dumping uh, quite a bit of money on a total axle rebuild front and back, all new bearings, seals, uh, both of them ended up with a little bit of new parts on the internals. Uh, but it's worth it. Hopefully I don't have to worry about that no more. I dumped a bunch of money in the brake system here. But now it's got disc brake in the front. It's factory drum in the back. We got brand new brakes on all four corners. We got brand new brake lines ran. Let me show you in the hood here. I'm going to set you down for just a second. Okay. 
Okay. So, note a warning. So this is the hood holder right here, and it attaches up there. And you've got this little, little rubber ring thing here. That's very important. If you don't slide this all the way down, this doesn't do anything, and the hood will fall on your head like it did on my brother two or three times. So when you're done, you just pull this, this rubber up. You pull the rubber up. See how it pops out like that without the rubber there? With the rubber there, it won't slide. But with the rubber up, it'll pop right in there and fall. It's not the best design in the world. Uh, but you know, the truck's from 1949. Anyway, so under the hood here, I've replaced, I've replaced the water pump. It's got a new thermostat. I ended up getting a new radiator. I wasn't planning on putting a new radiator in it, but the old radiator was giving me fits. She was, or he was running a little bit hot. We don't want Jubal running hot, so until I get the other radiator fixed, I've got this radiator. This is an all aluminum radiator. It seems to work pretty good. It keeps the truck pretty cool. So we'll leave it in there for a while. I uh, converted it over to 12 volt. So I put a GM one wire alternator in it so I don't have to deal with that BS uh, six volt system. Because I converted it to disc brake in the front, I had to put, this is called a proportioning valve. And what this does is it keeps your your brakes equally a balance between the truck. So if you don't do this, you'll have the front brakes will lock and the rear brakes won't work, or the rear brakes will lock and the front brakes won't work. So you got to proportion where the brake fluid goes to and balance it out. So I can adjust this if I ever need to. This also houses the uh, tail light switch. That's what this is. That houses the tail light switch. Um, the engine's very unmolested. It's got the original carburetor on it here, which I'll end up having to replace it at some point, but right now it runs good. Um, fuel pump down here, this is fuel pump, little bitty fuel pump, it works good. Um, it's got the BS vacuum align system that, that Willys was so proud of, but eventually I'm going to change this over to an electric motor so I don't have to worry about uh, vacuum line leaks and all that kind of crap. There's the the old bath oil filter or air cleaner, I'm sorry, excuse me, the old bath air cleaner. So you fill that full of oil and the air comes through, filters through the oil and then goes back into the engine, right? This is actually a more efficient filtering system for air. It really does a good job uh, catching contaminants out of the air before it goes into the engine, scores your cylinder walls. It's just people don't like it because it's a little high maintenance. You know, you got to change the oil in it. You got to drain the oil out of it. It's a whole thing. But you don't have to do it every day. You should basically do it every oil change. It's the way I do it around here unless you're driving on really dusty roads. Um, not the wrestler dusty roads, but dusty roads as in, you know, traveling. You should probably change it uh, you know, more frequently if you're in a really dusty environment. But for me, I'm going to change it at least every oil change. Um, so after the axle scenario went out, I worked on, you know, that took forever. The guys that did that were supposed to do it in three to four weeks, ended up being three or four months. Finally got that BS done with, got it back, got the axles put underneath it. Um, then I leaned into the brakes, got the brakes done. And I think Jubal is coming along nicely. Now the button here, this is where the, uh, horn button would be. I've yet to see one of these trucks with this intact. I've got the button, but what holds it in there um, is broke. So I'm going to have to figure out how to put that back on there. All it has, it's got the Willys Overland logo like this. Um, it's a super Spartan truck. You know, it's got zero comforts. You know, the most comfort it had was that, that heater box right there. That little silver box is, was the heater. Um, that's pretty much it. And, you know, it was meant for work. This is a one-ton truck. A lot of people don't believe that. This is a one-ton four-wheel drive work truck. In the beginning years, uh, you know, 47 to, I think around 50, 51, they did make a half-ton, and they did make a two-wheel drive version. 
but they weren't selling very well so they quit making them and they only made these trucks one ton four-wheel drive from that point all the way to 1964. They made a Willys Wagon version of this truck which is really badass and I was actually going to go buy one of those today and it got bought out from under me. Um, that over there is a 1954 CJ3B and behind that is a Model A Ford truck. Um, my brother over here, this is actually an heirloom Jeep. That is a 1942 GPW Ford military Jeep from World War II that our grandfather bought after the war. My brother's restored it. It needs another touch-up restoration, but it's, it's a good running Jeep. Um, basically, you're going to see this truck a lot in the future. Here pretty soon, I've got the final components. All I need to do left to it now is I need to do an alignment on the front end, which is no big deal. I gotta put the fuse under the dash I was telling you about. And pretty much that's it. After that, I gotta um, start driving the hell out of it. Now I did have a problem with the title for this truck was uh, kind of a little bit of a fiasco because it was out of state. So I ended up doing a bunch of paperwork and getting uh, Co-ops to come out here and check it out and all this kind of stuff, but I've got that almost finished up It is insured it is tagged right now But I've got to just do a little bit more to finish it up send it back to the state <clears throat> So they can approve it and then I can do since my birthday's next month I can go ahead and get my tag renewed and then we're driving her all over hell and creation And I keep calling it a her even though his name is Jubal so forgive me for calling it a her this is the only truck I got that's a man other than the Chevrolet. But I think this truck is just, I really don't know how Ford and Chevrolet didn't go out of business when Willys was making this. I just don't, I just don't understand. It, they were so ahead of their time. So at the time of this truck that it was made, there was only one other truck that you could get that was four wheel drive, factory four wheel drive. And that was a Dodge Power Wagon. So for years, all the way up into the later 50s, there was only two trucks that you could get that were four-wheel drive. Now, eventually, International would come in and start making one in the 50s, too, but they never were as prevalent as even Willys Overland. Now, Willys Overland, at a time, back in the teens, was the second largest automaker in the United States. They were just behind Ford in, in automobile, automobile production. So, Willys is a long-running name in automobiles. Hell, you see it today with the modern Jeeps. They even put Willys on the side of them. That's not a Willys. This is a Willys. This is a bona fide Willis Overland 1949 Willys truck. This is as real as it gets, as American as apple pie. Can't get any better. But apart, back to what I was saying, I trailed off there, forgive me. The part that is really advanced for the day is while Ford and everybody else is putting their gas tanks in the cab of the truck behind you, so there's nothing sketch about that. Willie's was putting the gas tank right there in the rear right-hand corner of the truck, or the rear left-hand corner, depending on if it was flatbed or not, from day one. Because they didn't want you to catch on fire and die. Okay, that's a Ford thing. You know, Ford's big on that. Pintos, Mustangs, that's their thing, you know. You get rear-ended, gas hits you in the back of the head, you light on fire. That's their thing. Willys had better ideas. So Willys puts the gas tank in the rear corner. I get rear-ended in this truck, I'm not going to burst into flames. It was pretty cool. It's pretty nice of them to do that. Not only that, the fact that it's four-wheel drive, the fact that it was a one-ton, the fact that this truck's kind of a mid-sized truck, but it's also a very capable truck. They made these trucks with a dump bed assembly. They made them flat bed. They made them with a regular bed. They made them for uh, custom made for railroad companies. Uh, they made them with track wheels so they could run on the railroad tracks. They did all kinds of stuff with these. They only made, um, from the numbers I've seen, they only made about a little over 200,000. They made them from 1946, 47. Um, all the way to 1964, and they only made 200,000 of them. Now, of the ones left, most of them have been butchered by some uh, lacking moral individual where they want to take a truck that's rare as hen's teeth and butcher it 
This truck is as original as it gets besides the disc brakes and the radiator. Outside of that, it's 100% original. Even the rear axle, I tracked down an original Willys axle that could have came in this truck because the Temkin clamshell axle was an option. So the axle that's in this is a Dana 53 in the back. It's a Dana 27 in the front. It's got 538 gears. Uh, the engine in it is a four-sonar flathead, what they call an L-head, Go Devil uh, 134. This is basically the exact same engine that they put in the military Jeeps during World War II. So this was the legendary Go Devil engine. It produces about 65-ish horsepower. So it is weak, but the thing is it's not strong enough to tear itself up. If you take care of them, even mildly at all, they last a long time. Every engine I've seen that was stuck in a Willys that I've bought was because it had been left out in the rain. I've yet to see one or pull one apart that was from a catastrophic failure. Um, and I've had probably four or five here in the last three or four months that had stuck engines in them and it was because they were left in the rain with the hood up or they were pulled out of a, out of a truck or a wagon or whatever and they were left in the rain. That's not an issue, you know, just like any other engine. You let it fill full of water, damn thing's gonna get stuck. You don't want that. Now down here, if you can see it, is the new, uh, behind the steering column there, it's not gonna focus. But behind the steering column there is uh, the master cylinder. So it's a dual master cylinder now. So if I lose brakes in the rear, I still have them in the front. If I lose them in the front, I still got them in the rear. That way I don't die, you know, because the original had a little tiny, little itty bitty microscopic master cylinder that held like a thimble full of brake fluid. And if you got a leak, you're gonna die. You're gonna run out of brake fluid. You're gonna stomp the brake, nothing's gonna happen. And your Willis is gonna go careening into the ditch. And we don't want that. Because when that happens, you end up like this rig over here. This is a rig, as I was saying, that was a perfectly good vehicle until somebody decided to park it. So this one's got the intact engine in it. There's the engine. They even bothered to co cover the carburetor with some plastic. This engine's completely intact. There's no reason for it to be stuck other than the fact that it was neglected. Now this one came out of Florida here. So it's got a little bit of rust issues. But the thing is, is this one I'm selling for the drivetrain. It's got the complete drivetrain in it. I'm selling it to the guy that needs an engine block to rebuild, a guy that needs a transfer case, the guy that needs the axles. I've had people want to buy just the body off of it, believe it or not, because they like the way the body looks. People like this kind of patina, which I think it's a little past patina, but, you know, people like different stuff. But I've also got another Jeep like that one with a phenomenally perfect body uh, that I'll show you all in another video. But this is the introduction to the Willys Overland 1949 flatbed one-ton four-wheel drive work truck and it's really a dream come true for me to have this truck let me put the hood back now so y'all get another look at it get another look at Jubal so here you go get you one more look at him get you a downward shot you tell me that's not badass you try to tell me go ahead because I don't believe you. You know it's badass. It's sick. I know you weren't ready for me to show you my willies like this all unannounced, but here you go. Now you see it. And you can't unsee it. So, you'll be, you'll be seeing this truck a lot in the future. You've been seeing that truck, that Chevrolet over there. You'll still see. You'll still see him. But this truck, when the weather's pretty decent, uh, and we're not going up to the farther deeper camps we're gonna be taking this truck and it's gonna be it's gonna be good it's gonna look real good we'll get some good footage of it wheeling in the mountains and I'm really looking forward to it Brian's a little skeptical but that's just because he hasn't rode in it yet once he rides in it Brian's a little skeptical but once he rides in it He's going to be on board because there's no way to not be on board with this. I mean, look at it. Look at it for God's sakes. Look at it. It's amazing. But anyway, that's the introduction to the 
Willie's Overland Truck. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions or anything, or and I'm going to post this on the Willie's forum and stuff for guys on there. A lot of guys want to see more of these trucks. There's not a whole lot of videos of them on YouTube. So I want to inundate YouTube with this Willie's truck because I think it's sick. There's way too many generic Chevrolets and Fords. They're all generic Studebakers. You see them all the time. You don't see these damn Willies. You don't see them. They're rare. I had to go to Arkansas to get this one. You know, most of them are in California. A lot of them are out west. There's not many around here. They were made in Ohio. So, you know, apparently 99% of their shipping went west. Didn't come over here. So they're really rare around here. And they're really rare in this kind of condition. So, we're going to... We're going to take him out wheeling. We're going to go camping. We're going to go overlanding. That's where the name overlanding comes from, right? Willie's Overland. They're the first overlanding vehicles in America. Or the first ones worth a damn, probably. But uh, this model has the, the what they call the flat grill. Now, it's not actually flat. But it's flatter than the later models. But we'll get into that later. But anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. And this is Ray Clay Trailer signing out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you want to see anything else about the truck or the Jeeps I got or anything else you've seen around here, then let me know in the comments or write me on Facebook or Instagram at Ray Clay Traveler. But anyway, hope you have a good day.